good in the, good evening everybody um so yeah, have i been punctual yeah hi desho priyo hi nitin hi nadeed omi urmi atishi i'm telling all these names now because later on uh, quite difficult ho jaye because there's so many people but uh, yeah so um let me uh, start by telling this incredible story that um, my love for mountains you all know my love for uh, adventure actually i think i realize my love for mountains is primarily my whole concept is care kaam nahi karna mereko so mountain means chutti and chill types whatever to wo karte karte i just love the mountains and then climbing and that's that and i i've been always reading stories is amazing that all of you read fiction and books and i've always read stories about mountaineering vinod ji namaskar um what stories of mountains do and mountaineers do ki usme mere ko sab kuch drama milta hai mere ko full bollywood dikhta hai usme there is like you know adventure there is romance there is uh, failure then the underdog rises i just love the narrative of a of a mountain story so the interesting bhai ranjana how are you awesome to see you hi sushmita hi indrani sarkar lots of people so the interesting story about uh, what i'm going to tell you right now is that i was in pune in my farm house and um, i think the the day before i had had some samosas and the samosas were wrapped in a newspaper uh one of the pune local newspapers and so now next day samosa is over it's in my stomach i'm happy and now it's the newspaper is just lying there with oil and all that and i see a photograph of a girl of a 19 year old girl called krishna patel who i think just a week back had summited mount everest and she's a local maharashtrian girl so i said oh my god and i picked up that samosa oil clad newspaper and said oh my god wow and it stuck stuck that face that name stuck with me and i remember um i think uh, four five days later i met swanand i was in a recording i said swanand man did you know that there is this girl from maharashtra 19 years old she, she climbed everest she said ah of course and uh, by the way i am doing a talk at something and i'm going to meet her i said sonand i have never asked anything from you buddy buddy mere ko yaar milwa de is ladki se yaar so he said ah theek hai so uske baad i think a good year has passed by life has gone on and things have happened so now we are in a a leadership talk conference called ink which is done by my good friend lakshmi and i am suddenly i'm i'm in a, in a common room and sonan is waving hand and i said he comes running sir 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 so he takes me and there is a very vivacious young girl standing there and said sir this is krishna so i have got a memory of a sparrow i don't remember any, anything which is beyond two days so i'm like <laughs> i'm like uh, okay hi so sonan figured that i not understood sir yahi to isne to everest chadi thi ye so i said oh my god this is krishna patel so and i think that is when it was of course i was like fascinated by this girl who who climbs everest at 19 so anyway i think a friendship started but as the friendship grew i realized the everest was the least of the peaks she's climbed she's climbed some incredible peaks in her life challenges doing new things uh, a social entrepreneur trying to make a difference and uh, i figured this is this tenacity this is this this uh, the way she has been made that is the reason why she could climb everest and uh, i'm very very happy to say that uh, today we have krishna patel krishna as we speak runs a cafe run that i think owns a cafe yeah in kashmir um and um, i am very happy to say even krishna's mother is 
watching this um ranjana uh, ranjana patel who is an incredible woman who's actually made so i'll first quickly see uh get krishna on board uh oh my god the diva is here Hi. hello <laughs> hello so this is you? all the way from srinagar right yes all the way from srinagar so so this is a cafe tell me about the cafe so um well we have reopened right now uh, because of corona uh, mm. it's been two weeks and uh, in fact just today we started dine in so it's ah. been a crazy week uh, oh yeah i forgot to tell you that uh, other than doing this i was also uh, i mean i have a mm, instagram live happening or oh, with a thing and i had to reopen the cafe for seat and sitting in today which is of course it's always a lot of work bringing in a lot of people together to fix acs to get uh, sanitization done to get uh, to get mall you know literally get more ration because we are hoping for better sales and better business hopefully so yeah just uh, it's a whole new mountain to climb and i am you're nervous. you're you're ruining the image of kashmir which is like holiday just chill not do anything what is this? Uh, this is so much of hard work krishna what is this it, in fact it is it's like um you know um i mean we say this a lot in kashmir uh, in kashmir when you get a job uh, you have to also master the art of not doing it's like Absolutely. are you an engineer okay. can you can you not engineer are you a cook can you not cook <laughs> We have to build a flyover. Can you not build a flyover? <laughs> so I I I love that philosophy because are you you are you a composer? Can you not create songs? Can, can you not yeah. compose? Can you this live is, is... without composing for a whole year and still yeah. be able to compose a year after that? I did that for hundred so, days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so But, yeah, uh, I mean. Uh, this is not a usual so, so krishna tell me one thing uh, before we start your uh, I, i i i'm doing this like a movie i'm talking about the present first and i'll do a flashback so we'll do a flashback yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so krishna why kashmir what happened so, suddenly um so like i mean a lot of people ask me this question and i have uh, one of the answers that i figured out is that my life is posted here right now you know oh. like like army posting like government posting my life is posted here you know god has sent me here in a certain way um so i mean the trigger to leave bombay was actually the elphinstone road uh, bridge tragedy that happened uh, early 2017 okay. and uh, i was on that bridge uh, exactly a day before that happened and okay. you know that really shook me in the sense that i was like oh my god what if i was there and i was one of those 23 people that died on a bridge just crossing because uh, you know pool gir gaya aur phool gir gaya me confusion ho gaya i was like i much rather die on a mountain and uh, i think by 2015 i uh, you know uh, in terms of getting back on the mountain and doing expeditions had gotten harder and harder in terms of getting sponsorships in terms of you know there was you know my 8848 campaign that i you know tried to really get off ground but it didn't work it didn't happen mm. and uh, i feel that bombay had really gotten to me you know i i was craving to be in the mountains like i had reached a stage where i was like what am i doing here like i, I should feel yeah 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 so um i was frustrated talking to uh, anandi my uh, friend mm. and uh, she said why don't you just take off what is stopping you go to the mountains maybe find a job as a chef and climb on the side for your own pleasure whenever you feel like and i was like yeah hell yeah i should do that the magic was that a week later and mm. this story i did not know but comes back to you and swanand huh? because mm. um so uh you know i uh, i think for uh, the concert that you had done for me at bavras tani tanveer had come okay. who was a friend of swanan's who i had right. never met but she was facebook friends with me and we were kind of uh, facebook allies in the sense that when i uh, posted something feminist or she did and we had 
people fighting with us in the comment section we both you know used to go to each other's pages and sort of stand there for each other so i'd never actually seen her but she posted a post that said uh, i have this friend in K kashmir who is looking for a chef uh, in shrinagar in his cafe called books and bricks and this was literally a week in a week's time after i'd had this conversation with my friend and i was like hell yeah i mean this so is you, a sign you, you, you didn't know anything it. about cooking i mean your mother is a brilliant cook your your everybody what what is this chef hey 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 what a fraud you are food? what are you saying oh, chef in a cafe excuse don't me don't you remember don't you remember the yeah. the yeah, course, menu yeah, Barbecues yeah, but, like, and burgers and, and this and that. Wow! No, so see, I'll, to be honest, burgers and pizzas I learned once I came here. Mm -hmm. But I have been a fan of cooking. Or actually, to be very honest, when I went into the mountains, I invariably, whether it was an expedition in Europe, whether it was an expedition in Antarctica, whether it was anywhere, I invariably became in charge of food in a team. Maybe because I'm a woman, I don't want to say that because that sucks. I I would rather don't say take. that because I was a good cook. I was a, a good, good cook. cook. That's you. why. That's why course, the food responsibility came on me in a of team course. of men. I will not give this power to them. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so I think I cooked, you know, from lasagnas to pastas to just really bad rice at very very high altitudes, uh, and. Uh, the other thing that uh, you know triggered me also was uh, you know when my my male companions would uh, be going back home they'd be like oh i can't wait to go back home and my mother will make me this my girlfriend will make me this or my wife will make me this when i went home and asked my mother she would be like oh you have come now i don't have to cook you know <laughs> <laughs> i can just lay back and relax my That's aunt, a rowdy, my yeah. cousins mm -hmm. uh my friends would come home to me make me cook sit down and make me tell stories and you know i mean i think i think i was uh, i mean from dinner uh, from dance dinner parties in bangalore before i climbed everest uh it, and okay to be very honest when i did the interview with the owner uh i i mean i told them that i don't have any qualification in cooking all i do is throw mm. good dinner parties and my friends love my cooking my my qualification was my friends love my cooking that's great uh, and, that's great and their only question was are you willing to work in a 10 by 10 kitchen with mm. four other men and i was like what that's you used like... to this yeah i yes, do that absolutely. every day <laughs> the profession i when i'm climbing but but oh, but the yeah. thing is the first and foremost congratulations for for this cafe in uh, kashmir we'll come back to this now yeah. i'm going to do a flashback shift so yeah. the thing is this i want to understand that it is not an every day and i'm sure the people who are watching this that a 19 year old girl wanting to climb everest cannot be an overnight thing the preparation would have started earlier so yeah tell me What is it like? What is your home like? I mean, how does is your mom cool with a daughter going to Mount Everest? How does this work? Okay, so um, let me give you a background of my family. Um, my father was a merchant navy officer, so essentially mm. he only came back uh, about three months in a year. Yeah. Uh, my mother was a school teacher and uh, spent twenty four seven on me. Uh, my schedule as a child as long mm. as i can remember from i think first grade to 12th grade was mm. to wake up at 4:30 go, go for yoga till 5:30 mm. come back get ready for school 7:15 we used to reach school 7:15 to 1:30 was my school after which i had uh, swimming classes drawing classes dance classes Uh, singing classes, sitar classes, skating classes, karate classes, uh, tennis classes. Have I missed anything? Uh, and workshops of jewelry making, pottery, this that. Uh, Pune was a great trekking city, so every weekend, me and my mother or my mother used to send me off 
for treks with uh, pug marks or my first uh, camping group was something called Shiv Shakti Pratishthan where we went to all the forts in in and around Pune learning the history I've I've I am still a big history buff. I think even that comes from there. The three months that my father came, we that was our summer vacation, two and a half months of summer vacation, which we spent 15 days in our village, native village in North Maharashtra, and then drove in our sumo uh, to a state every year. I think 96 was the first time I came to Kashmir. I still have this tiny parent that I that now fits me like a top, which I still wear. <laughs> uh, you know, um, and every year I think we did we did Jammu Kashmir one year, we did Ladakh one year, we did Himachal Pradesh, we did. I've gone to Pangong Lake in two thousand. So there this was, was not. A, there was not, not even a, family, a road there. This was not a family which is telling their daughter, "Don't do this, don't do that." It's saying like, "Hey, embrace." Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, I think my mother, uh, I was not very good in studies. I, I was good in studies till about fifth standard. And then I totally, I mean, I went from uh, being a 90% student to a 40% student, like overnight. Uh, and my mother never took that as an offense. She was like, Theek hai. Matlab, of course, I, I got a little bit of scolding for not studying for X, Y, Z. But it wasn't, or even, I mean, uh, in tennis, I went till zonals lost. In karate, I lost. In swimming, I lost. In drawing, I never won in any competition. So it was right. not like I excelled in all this. I Everybody was, else, yeah. yeah, I was just, <laughs> thank God there are people that love us for yeah. this. Thank God for that. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> but yeah, I was never. I was not, I mean, I think I was really bad at tennis. In fact, I, I at some point, I remember wanting to become the next Sanya Mirza, but I knew I didn't have that talent. Mm -hmm. uh, but when, also like climbing camps that I did in Maharashtra, I was not spectacular. I was always the favorite student of the instructors or things like that. Uh, the most outgoing, the most talkative, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I don't know whether I had real talent. I really found out my talent for like my talent for dance and mountaineering both shot you know started showing its colors around the same time so till date i mean i i always say this and uh, you know my mother is a big shiva bhakt she does this monday fast she's been doing all her life uh, and this is something I've learned over the years. I have learned Bharatnatyam and classical dance yeah, and music I since I was a yeah, child yeah. and done yoga since I was a child, which is all Shiva, you know. Mm. Uh, and I think that by the time I became 18, I think, you know, this love affair of ours, me and Shiva, had reached his pinnacle and he was like, you know what? I'll take you to my penthouse. <laughs> Come, ah. I'll show you something amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. And so I think I, I I think that I prepared my whole life for the mountains without even knowing. It, knowing you know? that's a beautiful thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was I was uh, I was you know made for it or you know my life was flown in that particular direction. So you must have joined uh, the Mountaineering Institute. Um, did, yes. did your did your mountaineering course. Uh, when you when when this uh, you would be what around eighteen at that time or seventeen? Uh, when I first went to the Nehru Institute, I was fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Was the and focus ever? No, never, never. I'll tell you what the focus was. The focus was traveling alone. I went ah. alone from Pune to Uttar Pradesh, and that hmm. time it was Uttar Pradesh, not Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand sounds so much more safer than Uttar Pradesh. Hmm. You know. Sounds even the word Uttarakhand sounds yes. safer than Uttar Pradesh. But yes. I went to Uttar Pradesh in 2005 as a 15 year old, and um, your mother is a rock star. She, she yeah. was like, Who is she? 15 years old, she sends you. Yeah. Oh my god, and I went, a, I went, a... I did not have, I did not have hotels or anything. My father had, though, my father had stitched money into the hem of my pants, correct? Like, correct. Thousand rupees in this pant, mm. thousand rupees in another pant. 
you know crazy stuff like that was done um i went i reached dehradun by train mm-hmm. uh, or rishikesh by train and then i lived in the velham girls high school i mean this principal i went to the, her house at 8 in the night mm-hmm. the campus was empty because diwali vacations you know these camps happened during diwali vacations she was having a dinner party in her house and i told the chokidar ki please i am with a backpack a 15 year old girl at the door of velham high school amazing i go there i meet the principal and i tell her i need a place to stay she's just like what the hell? where have you come from and i told her i i uh, have read about wellham uh, school from books and things books, that yeah, i had yeah. read about boarding yeah. schools and always wanting to be in a boarding school correct and she let me stay in a dorm hmm. where there was one warden or one peon staying i think the next okay. morning early in the morning i have gotten up and i have mm. gone to um uh the state transport this thing i have two days before i can reach uttarkashi in nim mm. so i go to corporate national park in ramgarh i take a 8 hour journey mm. okay i again reach at 8 in the night to co- to uh, ramgarh mm-hmm. and i don't have money in, now ramgarh is extremely expensive all the hotels mm. are 1200 so 1500 so you okay. know above 1000 basically Yeah. And I'm like I can't I don't have that much money. Those are my mm. like rescue mm. money if I have nothing mm. left. Mm-hmm. So the conductor who's about a 23 year old man who I have made friends with now and whose mm. phone I have used because I don't have a mobile. Um I go back to the bus stop I meet him and I tell him this is my problem what can I do and he mm. he tells me that uh, circuit house mein dormitory hai. Mm. So aap वहां जाइए आई एम लाइक कहां है सर्किट हाउस चलो मैं आपको ले चलता हूं वी हैव वॉक थ्रू अ टाइनी फॉरेस्ट टू रीच द सर्किट हाउस ऑन टॉप ऑफ अ टाइनी हिल एंड आई हैव लिव्ड इन अ डॉर्मेटरी आई हैव थैंक्ड दिस मैन ही हैज स्पोकन टू माय मदर आई हैव इन द डॉर्मेटरी देयर वाज अ बंगाली फैमिली एन एंटायर बंगाली फैमिली विद ऑल देयर टिफिनस ओपन दे वर जस्ट ईटिंग देयर डिनर आई हैव ईटिंग डिनर विद देम माय मदर हैज स्पोकन टू द entire family like yeah. you know this whole thing has happened and yeah so i think yeah i was allowed to do i mean my mother was extremely like um, mm. amazing lady ranjana really hats yeah. off your she's watching this <laughs> now what we'll do is uh, now the whole idea is uh, krishna i want to take our audience yes. on this himalayan on this everest So now yes, I'm, fast I'm fast forwarding. I'm fast forwarding. Tell me about the the. Tell me about what is happening. About a phone call comes you one day saying that hey, there is a slot available in Everest. How does this work? Uh, Shadri, you know, no, that was not that easy. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was a mad journey that made that possible but uh yeah let's go to that moment yeah, so i was in short, yeah let's in go that to moment. that moment yeah. yes um i was uh, returning from my uh, search and rescue course hmm. in uh, in nim and i had just come into coverage so we had been hmm. in the mountains for 21 days i had been out of coverage the last that i had heard we had we were attempting to go on everest but i had given up hope uh because no sponsorships were coming through and you know uh, all of that was happening uh the last i had i knew that my father was about to take a loan which i had disapproved i before going into the mountains i had said that no ways i am not going to climb on mere मेरे दिमाग में वो था था बाप के पैसे पे नहीं जाऊंगी मैं मैं अपने पैसे पे जाऊंगी तो या नहीं एक्चुअली आल्सो दिस केम फ्रॉम माय इंस्ट्रक्टर्स एंड ऑल यू नो माय इंस्ट्रक्टर्स इन एनआईएम वुड ऑलवेज से अरे अगर किसी के पास पैसा हो ना तो कोई भी चढ़ सकता है अगर टैलेंट होगा तो हम भी चढ़ सकते थे सो आई थिंक दैट केम फ्रॉम देयर ऑल्सो यू नो जस्ट वॉन्टिंग टू ऑल्सो प्रूव इट टू देम दैट आई कैन डू इट ऑन माई मेटल एंड नॉट बिकॉज आई कैन गेट मनी Absolutely. Uh so I came back and my uh my principal my vice principal of uh, NIM uh, mm. at that point uh who had been speaking with my mother and you know conspiring to take me on Everest I would say For people who don't know uh please tell them what is NIM stands for NIM is Nehru Institute of Mountaineering um uh, founded Which in 1994 Nehru yeah. 
uh, no uttarkashi in uttarakhand yeah yeah thank you uh, it's one of the premier institutes of mountaineering yeah. like that's, legendary that's your that's your i am that's your i am mba to do um, great jobs in uh, top notch corporates you have to go yeah. through this to reach the yeah. top of any top notch mountain summit yeah please go exactly. ahead exactly yeah exactly yeah and so uh, so my wife principal called me and said that uh, tell sinorbu na sinorbu was one of my very close instructors he said tell sinorbu to make a list for you of everest he didn't even tell me that you're we have hmm. a slot open you're going on everest no he called me up and he told me uh, speak to sinorbu all the way uh, wherever you're from till you reach uttarkashi hmm. the moment you come you have to issue yourself all the equipment that we need to climb everest you are going to delhi tonight and you're flying to nepal day after my god Just like that, huh? on the, yeah this is on the 10th march <laughs> 10th of march and 11th of march is my graduation of uh, you know we have a graduation ceremony that happens and i have actually fought to the nail to say that i am going to do the ceremony and only then go i you know because i don't know whether i'll come back and like being on that and i am stage and getting that badge yeah. was like life for me that time. What's i the, actually what's the, what's the summit for you what's the summit for you <laughs> yeah for me <laughs> at that point it was like nahi main nahi jayegi till i get my badge on the podium i will not go to everest mm. uh my mother has flown in and then i have of course spoken to my mother my mother has told me that oh um we were <laughs> we were speaking you know i had i have such incredible stories even leading up to that there was the kanda batata association in pune that was willing to sponsor me Uh, before saying? i yeah yeah kanda yeah. batata yeah. association association of pune was willing to sponsor me please kanda batata is onion and potatoes yeah hmm. yeah uh, and uh, she said that they managed something from a big trust apparently mandis were big you know the things i have done to get that sponsorship um and so she told me yeah that that thing has come through and uh, it's uh, you know they're all they're going to take care of it and it's happened so until we actually reached uh kathmandu my mother didn't tell me that it was actually the loan that my father had taken from the saraswat cooperative national i mean saraswat cooperative bank um and they had actually sanctioned it in 5 minutes and the money had transferred to my mother's account in less than 15 minutes and they had actually given the loan to my father on the fact that he was taking it for his daughter who's 19 years old and yeah, who wants yeah. to attempt to climb everest of course the bank waived off the loan you know that yeah but but uh, you just pause here because i just want yeah. to tell the people who are watching this just you have to understand that there is this um, there is a, there is a bank which actually is giving a loan of i think that it was around 35 lakhs am i right 30 lakhs 30 yeah 30 lakhs to a person who is a regular in the bank that's it that's his only qualification and what is and what is his, what is his daughter doing his daughter is climbing everest who cares which bank today will care but that's the amazing part about local banks at this bank and had soft this person who actually gave this money for yeah. something as big as climbing mount everest for them you know had soft it was it was a man called mr thakur he was incredible he he passed away a few years ago but yeah he was incredible yeah, yeah. yeah. so great yeah. now now next fast forward okay next for fast forward to uh, base camp everest base camp yeah. 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 no so you no, no no so you're in kathmandu no yes that's from kathmandu you are going to you, you went to lukla or where, how did it go what happened right. you yeah, flew so, to lukla yeah first first of all i bought uh, like uh, you know a bride buys her wedding trousseau mm. i bought my uh, mountaineering equipment uh, you know the best of it i mean i think my mother never gave me such a free hand on money i was literally mm. told to pick up the best in fact my mother was like isse acha koi hai isse acha koi hai so, you know that was the first time uh, that was happening Hmm. uh i think we bought i mean i bought socks shantanu i bought uh you know warm inner wear and matlab i had nothing i had no t-shirts i had nothing i had come from the uh uh search and rescue course i uh, i had to buy every item that i used on everest hmm. so the first two days in kathmandu we did this whole shopping which was exhausting hmm. 
and uh, then i flew to lukla now my mm. team that i joined which was the eco everest expedition yeah. 2009 uh, had already left they had left mm. six days before me they were about six to seven days ahead of me mm. and so um i was supposed to catch up with them somewhere what happened with uh, this was my schedule of going to uh, base camp happened in 8 days okay. so generally people take about um 15 days to get to base camp because everyone acclimatizes for me i had just come from a course so i was good in that i was good with my acclimatization so i actually met my team 2 days before we uh, reached base camp um, uh, guys, uh, those of you who, who uh, the, the way she's telling this story seems like a walk in the park. Uh, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I have gone to base camp thrice. It is, it is horrible, and especially I, the last sound I remember when I'd gone over there, <sighs> you're wheezing because you, it's bad, and this girl just walks into this like a. I was 19 years old. Come on. I was yeah. flying. There was no. I mean, today as a 30 year old, I understand what fatigue is or I understand tired. I don't think I had the word tired Concept, in my. Yeah, yeah I, I was I was never tired. I could keep walking forever. You could keep me walking for 24 hours and I would reach the place, cook you dinner, dance for you, and then chat with you for an hour, and then go to sleep. And you'll okay. be like, this so no, 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 no. So now, now you're, you have reached base camp, and you're meeting this yes. crew for the first time, the team. Yes, yes. Tell me about the team. So my team, I mean, you know, uh, my team was the most incredible team ever. Uh, my uh, leader was Dawa Steven Sherpa, uh, who, had who was about 24 four years old at that point. He was four years elder to me. Uh, he had climbed Everest already twice before. Um, okay. Our climbing leader was Apa Sherpa, who okay. was, who at that point held the record to be the man that has climbed Everest for the uh, maximum number of times. Okay. Uh, and he had climbed it for 18 times. Oh my God. Uh -huh. 18 times. 18 times. Um, I had Will Cross, who was a diabetic, who had mm -hmm. climbed all the seven summits, who had already summited Everest, but was attempting to do it again this year. Uh, there was uh, Bill Burke, who was, uh, just a background, was uh, the guy who uh, got the euthanasia bill passed in America. He was a big, short lawyer uh, from the US. He was 67 years old and became... Mm -hmm the eldest person to climb Mount Everest that year. My God, what a team. We had, we had Mons Jensen, who had climbed Everest twice before, uh, once from the north and once from the south, who was now attempting to climb it without oxygen. Okay. Uh, we then had Bud Allen, who was a pilot who was climbing Everest. We had Henry from Germany, who was like six foot four inches. Uh, massive. He was my climbing buddy. Uh, climbed mount crazy mountains in Russia and like, you know, like a real insane guy. Um, then we had Nick Cunningham from the US. He was also young. He was about 23, 24 years old. Uh, again, uh, had done a few of the seven summits. Um, and then we had um, Andy, who was again <clears throat> uh, from America. He was also a new time climber. So we were about three or four of us that were young climbers, very, very young in, in our 20s. Uh, I mean, I was 19, but uh, they were in their 20s. Uh, and a good slot of older climbers, like Bud Allen was 53, Will Cross was about in his 50s. So we had a great mix of climbers, and they all had done their seven summits, all of them had completed their seven summits, and all were attempting. like. So Nick and Andy, the, who were the younger guys, had already done their other seven summits and were doing their last summit now. So just hold on. So a lot of people who are, uh, who it's a new language for you. So seven summits is basically the highest, the highest. mountain in the seven continents. Okay. 
all the seven continents highest mountains these guys she's talking about they had already climbed the highest mountains in every continent yeah. and now coming to now coming to asia the highest mountain was mount everest and this was the summit so this is the backdrop this is the curriculum why it is a bad rate of the people she is climbing with yes please go ahead ma'am so uh, i think i learned a lot from them like i remember mons uh, telling me once that uh, you know that you will climb this mountain this year but you will actually climb this mountain all your life you will never stop understanding realizing for you right now it's nothing and truly honestly you know it when i did it i was just like so now so now um, i'm excited so you're on base camp Do you have your own tent? Are you sharing with somebody? What's happening? No, I have my own tent. I'm uh, a little fancy like that for expeditions. Okay. Uh, but I have my own tent. I, I would say that's a boon and bo uh, this thing. But that would be like. Uh, and do you have your own stuff. porter? How does it work? Yes, I had my own Sherpa, okay. um, yeah. Appa Dai, and oh, uh, he had yeah. climbed. Uh, he had climbed Everest about uh, six times. Oh my. God, yeah. Uh, his name was Gyalu. Appa uh, is actually Gyalu. Uh, Appa is actually brother, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so now, now tell me one thing. So I, I'm I'm going to ask you questions to. Yeah, so now, yeah. planning is happening. So how 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 does the planning of an Everest summit assault take place from the base camp? Take us through it. Okay. So uh, once we've reached base camp, we've reached base camp on the twentieth of April now, and uh, we have about a month to prepare. Generally, a uh, climbing window uh, historically is always from uh, onwards the twentieth of May. So by the twentieth of May, we have to really be ready uh, with our gear, with our acclimatization, with our brains and our bodies and everything. So uh, the first three days we rest at base camp. we uh, and rest doesn't actually mean rest in the mountains like you know it means that you keep walking you keep trekking you keep doing activities that uh, make you breathe harder uh we there is something called work high sleep low so uh, some of us actually uh, will you know not towards the khumbu ice fall because it's the most dangerous part of yeah. the uh, Uh, mountain but uh, we go to various other places to go as high as camp 1 and breathe there eat a meal there drink some water come back rest go to sleep uh, at base camp we have you know uh, uh, we have a sherpa that uh, prepares the dinner for the uh, entire team because it's and um, you know easier that food is made in bulk but above that we have to cook our own food at every other camp and so uh the third day on the 23rd i did my first uh, rotation to camp 1 during this time i have to you know divide my equipment in uh, to equipment that i use only above uh, certain camps and equipment that i will use even at base camp all the equipment that i have to use only above a certain level i take up on every trip that i go i drop mm -hmm. it there so oxygen cylinders uh stoves gas okay. cylinders uh high altitude shoes the the big mile ones uh ice axes things that i um uh, will not use hmm. that much uh, down at base camp is all transported up in fact we have two different sleeping bags we have a base camp sleeping bag and a high altitude sleeping bag the high altitude sleeping bag is actually minus 40 sometimes at base camp uh we cannot uh you know um sleep in such a heavy sleeping bag because it yeah, gets yeah. hot yeah. um so yeah i mean that is what happens through this acclimatization process and um so i did my first rotation 23rd by the 29th i did my second rotation by the uh, 11th of may i had actually finished all my rotations so which okay. means that i had gone up to camp 3 left all my equipment there camp 3 uh, sits at about uh, 7400 meters so uh, i didn't spend a night there but i spent an afternoon there and came back 
we so i'm 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 just going to stop you i'm going to ask you uh, as a as a uh, layman my birthright to ask you stupid questions um they say that um uh, they say that the kumbh wise fall probably is one of the most dangerous places okay yeah. uh, so when you're climbing uh, thrice to set up camps camp 1 camp 2 camp 3 uh, you are also crossing back and forth the kumbh wise fall yes yes just take 5 minutes and describe yes. kumbh wise fall all right so um the kumbu ice fall is literally a moving mass of ice and uh, it moves it's fixed with ropes and ladders for uh, it to make the movement through it safer there is something called uh, a team of special kumbu doctors which are basically sherpas that are uh, highly experienced in dealing with the kumbu ice fall uh, there are ladders that are joined um, you know about six or seven of them in a row which could span to about 50 feet sometimes at the maximum or i mean yeah in in my time at least um and of course so when you look at the kumbu ice fall from base camp you can actually uh, like if you wake up at 3 in the morning and look at the kumbu ice fall you will actually see the headlamps of all the climbers you know uh winding through the kumbu ice fall mm -hmm. and uh, looking at that uh, you know we were given time slots of mm -hmm. uh, of reaction time so if mm -hmm. you are in this section if a avalanche comes from this mountain then you have about 25 seconds to react and make yourself safe if you are in 20. this part you have you have 20 seconds or oh, 20 seconds is a lot those are the safe zones Oh. the the danger zones are when you are in 5 second and 10 second uh the 25 seconds is is great is you know in the so, kumbu i saw that 25 seconds is a lot of time lot that's a lot of time yeah uh, uh, tell so, you the thing so, so these crevasses yes for for a lot of people who don't know uh they were, what are they what are crevasses so a uh, crevasses are basically massive cracks in a glacier So imagine a massive glacier that is falling off a mountain and coming into a valley mm. right so it cracks and breaks and it moves so mm. the best time to move in the kumbu ice fall is actually in the night we we yeah. leave, we leave at like uh because it takes only about 2 hours to cross the kumbu ice fall at a maximum if you're going at a good speed No, 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 no. I took two. I took two hours. My partner Henry would do it in half an hour. He would oh. do it in half an hour. Wow. He yeah. did it in half an hour. Yeah. Okay. I would take two hours to do it. Uh, so, um, so I would leave at three before the sun hits the ice. You should You're be out of the kumbu ice because it is much. It is moving, much, and it's not that it doesn't move in the night. It also moves in the night. There are also avalanches in the night. Hmm. There's no such thing that there are no avalanches at night. it's just that it is a little safer a little yeah. safer to move during that time and uh, of course i uh, i had i'd seen one avalanche that came off the wall but it uh, completely missed the ice fall and you know was at least 50 meters away from us and flew on my I have, left i have heard uh, the sound of an avalanche in an everest base camp and it's probably one of the scariest sounds i've ever ever heard in my life it, i miss that rumbles, sound you know it rumbles from within within i just cannot describe it anyway do you, re so do from, you remember yeah so you know you got you you ask i was going to say do you remember the sound when you sleep in a tent and uh, in the middle of the night this attack attack yeah. happens that is happening underground that is happening in the glacier below you cracking. that oh that cracking god. sound is that yeah oh my god okay Sometimes so we now base camp base camp so you've moved on to now you've crossed you come to camp one am i right yes okay just, just before quickly no no no, uh, no, no. the rotations we've uh, rotation. we've done so, the rotations uh, there are two 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 ways you climb everest some some superhuman guys do it the alpine style which is like base camp camp 1 camp 2 camp 3 camp 4 summit come back and have a burger yeah yeah but the expedition yeah. style is really about acclimatization 
you set up a base camp, you go to camp one, camp two, come back to camp one, again, camp base camp, stay there for a few days. Yeah. Again, one, two, three, four, stay there a few days, come to three, two, one, stay. And finally, when your RBCs are like bubbling, red blood corpuscles are all over the place, then you get a go ahead. And then you go step by step by step. So that, then that's the there call. is a crescendo. That's the final crescendo. Yes, the final crescendo. So now tell me, has Krishna Patil understood this concept that maybe... Okay, let me rephrase. Is there a doubt for Krishna Patil that she may not climb Everest? Never. Never. Not even where is, a second. Where is this confidence coming from? Uh, it, you know, I over the years, again, I feel like it wasn't confidence. It was the ignorance of knowing better. Maybe. This is one of my theories today because I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why I was not scared or why did I not question whether I'll be able to do it or not. Like, honestly, it never crossed my mind that what if it doesn't happen? I had not even thought of that scenario. It was just not there. It was just bliss. And yeah. I was just in bliss. I was in pure bliss. I mean, uh, and failure your fellow, had not... Failure, failure, yeah, failure had not occurred to you. But more importantly, Krishna, your your fellow teammates, were hmm. they looking at you with like a doubt? Will, will she, won't she? No, not at all. That's so, incredible. So, you know, That's incredible. Because, because, I'll tell you, because we all spoke about this a lot. We would discuss this. Uh, Dava would always tell me that, you know, only 40% of a team ever climbs. One of Even the best teams, because we're all individual climbers, we were not a team effort. I mean, we are a team effort in terms of logistics, but we were individual climbers in terms of climbing. I only had Henry with me that I had to decide or, uh, you know, coordinate with. Uh, of course, I mean, in terms of team, we also had to coordinate in terms of, uh, you know, how many tents do we have at camp three? And uh, if only four team members are going, who will go? And I was actually put in team one. They showed, uh, they they did not doubt me. They did not question me. That's they incredible. taught me. They, 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 they gave me pointers. And uh, I was also so absorbing at that point that I even till date remember even tiny things that they said to me about how to keep my water bottle wow. or what is what is the best time to go and pee outside or, wow. you know, when the wind is sounding like this, what, know, does it mean? Uh, what does it mean or when the clouds are like this, what what should you do for the next day? You know, it was the most incredible. I mean. And it wasn't like we didn't discuss failure. They talked about, I mean, um, um, Mons had attempted to climb Everest thrice before he ever actually made it to the top. He had summited twice, but he had attempted some five times. There was a man at base camp who was from America, but who was Russian, who had attempted to climb Everest nine times. My God. Uh, is there electricity gone off in Kashmir? Uh, I have a feeling. Um, I think by the time she tries to uh, get back, let me um, let me let me take over from here. Uh, I hope she hopefully she'll get back. Um, um, so um, by the time she's getting back, guys, uh, practical problems. Uh, just to give you a situation, then we take electricity and. Wi-Fi so much for granted and uh, the situation in Kashmir is this that the fact that we could speak like this also it's so just so amazing. I just hope she can um, she can get back uh, uh, soon. But I think uh, I'll just put things in pers perspective, um, which is basically the fact that, as I said, uh, I've just been to the base camp, right, which is the starting point for what she's story is telling. But I think what makes Krishna uh, and her mother tells this beautifully. There was not an iota of negativity. There was no, there was no doubt that she cannot make it, which is just incredible. I think another thing which is very very important to uh, keep in mind, and for all, there are a lot of people who work in corporates and organizations, think of the situation that you're sitting in a boardroom meeting, and you have all the CEOs sitting around, and you have a young rookie, a young kid who is sitting there. 
I don't know of any corporate boardroom in India which will take care of this young kid the way Krishna's team took care of her. Because they knew that they were a team. It does not matter who has climbed eight times, attempted 15 times, who has not done at all. If you're a team, that's how it should be. And I think that is the biggest lesson that mountain climbing gives, which is, which is why I love mountain climbing stories, which is why I, I love uh, these conversations that uh, the fact that these experienced climbers took her as an equal, not that, not because she's a woman, not because she's uh, never climbed before, equal. Every information is not hidden; it's out there, and I think that is that is um, that is quite amazing. Um, by the time um, she's getting, and really, really hope because this, the drama was so incredibly being created. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a very interesting um, um, thing is that from camp two onwards, Krishna was just to concentrate. She was, um, she was hearing songs on her, on her Walkman or whatever it was. And one of the songs which propelled her. She says that. One of the songs which propelled her all the way to the top was a song which is very, very close to my heart. Can you believe it? The coincidence of it that the girl who I admired that, oh my God, she climbed Everest. Unknowingly, she was listening to a, she was listening to a song uh, which is very, very close to both me and Swanand, and she was listening to बाबरी से धड़कने हैं बाबरी है सांसे बाबरी सी करवटों से इंदिया दूर भागे बाबरे से नैन चाहे बाबरे झरूखों से बाबरे नजारों को तक बाबरा मन देखने चलाए के सपना बाबरा मन देखने चलाए के सपना so what are the chances that this incredible climber is listening to Bhavraman as she's climbing Mount Everest and that is the most incredible moment for me you know um, I will never go to the top of Everest but uh, the fact that something that we created Swanand and me was part of her inspiration is the best closest I can get to climbing Everest Bavare se nain chahe, bavare Bavara, bavara, bavara. Bavare se bavara ek saath ho, is saani bhir me bas. हाथों में तेरा हाथ हो बाबरी सी धुन हो कोई बाबरा एक राग हो बाबरी सी धुन हो कोई बाबरा एक राग हो बाबरे से पैर चाहे बाबरे तरानों के बाबरे से बोल पे देखना बाबरा मन देखने Krishna is back. I sang this song while you were trying to hotspot this because Bhavaraman, because I thought I told them the story about how you were listening to this while you were climbing Everest. Hello, hello. I'm sorry. No, not we a have problem. a storm happening here. 
oh my god oh my god so let's quickly try and finish the story um uh, we are uh, can can you talk hello hello can you hear me can you talk can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me krishna hello can you hear me um can you hear me i can hear you i can can you see me can you see me i can see you i can see you i can see you can you see me um if this is uh, just do one thing just just hold on guys i what i'll do can is that work um if this does not work then what i will do is i will take this tomorrow wait minute let me just see um Hey Krishna, can you hey. hear me? Uh, yes, can I can you hear, hear you. Uh, can you hear me? So, can yeah, you I can see hear you now. Can you see me? Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. I can see you. I can't hear you only. So, so do one thing. Do one thing. So do one Let's thing. do the technology. I'll you talk on this. Like this? You, you talk, talk on this. this. Yes. Okay. Let's do this incredible okay. technology. Okay. okay. So we are in. Uh, so, uh, sorry, guys. This is complete uh, improvisation. Yeah. Without sorry, Kashmir guys. You cannot. You cannot make Bavaraman without improvisation. You cannot climb Everest without improvisation. Okay. So, Truly. so uh, without so, me. So take yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, so where was I? Mm. You 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 are now now you, take, you take are us now, straight now, take, from take camp, us one straight camp, camp one to camp four. Camp one to camp four. What is happening? What is happening? Um are there any incidents uh, along the way? Are there any incidents along the way? So one of the biggest incidents again, I mean I was telling you about how incredible my team was in sort of putting that sense of uh you know i think even my sense of achievement and uh, how i dealt with it came from how my team has spoken about everything anyway one of the major incidents that happened was that on the 17th of may there was a massive avalanche on everest on the kumbu ice fall yeah. and about um and about um, one o'clock in the afternoon, we had a massive um... avalanche. Um, uh, Krishna, sorry, you, you're frozen. You're frozen again. You're frozen again. Um, I'll tell um, you. I, uh, you're back. You're back again. Back, yeah, sorry. Back. I'm, back. I'm back. I'm yeah. back. But you know, it's yeah. amazing. This you know, is giving me feeling that you're somewhere in top of. Everest because network is bad. Network so is bad. Is me I wish you could hear the sound of the wind outside. Look, can, look at can, this. Yeah, that is yeah, happening. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's, <laughs> it's, it's are you, you, do you need to go and take care of the cafe? Do you want to do this? We can do this tomorrow. No, no, no. Sure. No, let's. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, let's yeah. Go let's go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we, uh, we got disconnected that you there was a massive avalanche at one o'clock in the afternoon, right? Sorry, you, you've you've gone you've gone again, Krishna. I don't think so. This is going to work like this. I'm sorry because this technology, this thing is bad. So what we'll do is uh, let's we will we'll do this tomorrow, guys. Um, tomorrow we'll do this seven thirty because uh, yeah, we'll we'll take it from this point. Uh, sorry, guys. I think it's much better. You go back and handle the situation out there. I will wrap it up from here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, this is the uncertainty of life, but this is the uncertainty of Krishna Patil's life too. It's amazing. She's working in Kashmir all alone. This girl taking her cafe. Danger is part of a life. Incidents are part of a life. Um, what we'll do, guys, is that tomorrow at 7:30, and I'll put this in social media also. We'll continue from here. There's no point uh, doing this. I don't want to break the drama, the momentum of this incredible feat that that Krishna did uh, at 19 years of age. Um, please come back tomorrow. Um, sorry for this. Uh, this is uh, beyond our control. But I think this is also part of uh, part of lot of learning that uh, I think uh, we have to keep trying. We have to keep trying. And uh, all you have to do is log on tomorrow. Thank you for being there, guys. I'm sorry for this, but uh, we shall meet tomorrow, 7.30 again with Krishna Bhattal. We're going to take it forward from there. Thank you. Namaskar.